Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Art of Creation Homestead. My name is Jason, and I'm standing here in front of a blank garden. <laughs> right? It's absolutely empty because it's it was a mess. It was done. It's over, and we're just cleaning up the the ground cover here so we can get it ready to pull up and store away for the winter. But we do have food growing, and this is one of the I gotta be honest with you. It's one of my favorite things to do is to talk to people and to say. Oh, well, I still have this growing. And they kind of give you this look like, what? What are you doing? What are you talking about? You've got food growing. It's October. It's November. How do you still have food growing? What is going on here? And they're like, what, do you have a greenhouse or what? So no, we just planted stuff that likes cool weather and I cover it if it gets really cold. I don't know. So I enjoy that. <laughs> so we're going to do a little, a short fall garden tour. I'm going to talk about what we have growing and, and how we've got growing and what we're doing here, okay? I guess maybe to start with, we can say, hey, look, I got a couple of raspberries. And I do believe, yep, that's good. So we have some raspberries still growing. These are the ones we pulled out of the, out of the uh, ground over here earlier in the year. So in the spring, we pulled these. We had these, this variety of raspberries growing in the ground over here behind me next to, the, next to our privacy fence. We ripped them all out because they were just overgrown and unhealthy and in the way. I wanted to use that spot for something different. So I ripped them all out of the ground and I did take some of the offshoots and plant them in these grow bags right here just so we could keep the raspberries because we did buy them, we did pay for them and uh, they're good. <laughs> but we, um, we just didn't want them out of hand. And so we said in these, in these grow bags, we'll be able to keep the raspberries, still have some raspberries, keep them contained, and use that spot for something different. And we did. It's actually probably one of the best things we've ever done in our garden adventures is to put forth the work, put these raspberries in these grow bags, and then put butter peas in the ground over there. And it worked wonderfully. Butter peas did great. And we happen to still have delicious raspberries. So we, we didn't lose our investment. We just made it more appropriate. And over here, we do have some spinach growing. We've got four grow bags of spinach planted. These two were one variety, these two are the other. I believe these, I'm either right or wrong, right? I think these two bags were Bloomsdale Long Standing spinach. And I think these two bags were Gigante there and they in Daverna, whatever it is. <laughs> um, giant spinach, giant Italian spinach, essentially is what it is. I believe it's what it is. I mean, it's either right or wrong. I may be completely wrong, but we have these growing. Spinach likes cool weather. And when I planted it, I said it's going to be easy. I'll just put it all in here. And if it gets a little cool, it gets a little cool. We do use, as I said before, Agrabon, is what it's called. You get it at Amazon. Uh, we there's different thicknesses of it. I think we use AG50 maybe so it's a, a fairly thick version of Agrabon it gives you a good frost cover it lets light through lets air through so you can keep it over it and if it gets down below 30 degrees all your stuff's still fine really Agrabon is a fairly inexpensive um, investment a fairly low investment that, that's that you can use to really keep things growing well for a while and this is something else we use it on is these peas we have six grow bags of green peas growing and they like cool weather. Now I may have got them started a little bit late, but they have bloomed, <laughs> right? They are growing really well up these tomato cages that we're using for a, for a trellis. Um, and they, it's odd, the three that have bloomed are all one variety and the three that have not bloomed yet are a totally different variety. So this one right here is called Lillian's Caseload peas we've never look we never have had great success growing peas here because the climate in Ohio is just a little strange it either gets too hot to too cold really fast or you know it gets or it's too cold to too hot really fast and so it's really hard to get them germinated and growing to where they're producing a lot of pods of peas that makes it worth your while like sometimes you, we've planted them and gotten a little bit but not enough it gets too cold too fast so I said, you know what the heck with it, I'm doing it. And I, I, used all these, I used a bunch of grow bags and just planted all these pea seeds that we've had in the, from the past. And so I'm gonna plant them all, see what happens. I'm gonna do everything I can to keep them covered and see how it goes. Well, three of them are, are blossoming already. They've got a ton of blossoms on them. And Lillian's caseload, I think is supposed to produce 
like a ton of, of peas in one pot and they I'll be honest with you they do look like heavy producers so if we can keep them alive we're gonna keep them alive right so that's what these are and then the other three are I believe they're green arrow I and mean, we, we have a video where I planted them so we could probably tell <laughs> I think so I think then these are green arrow they're supposed to be the same you know as far as like the same days of maturity as the Lillian's caseload peas but they haven't bloomed yet I don't know <laughs> so maybe they'll produce blooms later but the pods will come on faster I'm not sure now one thing I did do was I did fertilize them all with um, I think I just used bone meal I don't know if I used kelp meal or not I may have used some kelp meal too but I know I used a lot of bone meal I may have fertilized the uh, Lillian's caseload peas heavier than I did the green arrow I don't know because at a point at a certain point I just started dumping it in there I possibly could have put more more bone meal or something on, on those I don't know exactly they don't really these are, these look healthy still so I don't, I don't think it's that's really the issue but they're gonna they're gonna I think they're gonna bloom here soon but it is gonna get cold right now we're in kind of a, a warm spot of weather so it's really abnormal it's it's above average it's gonna be up near 80 here in a couple of days so we're gonna have some, we've had some good days and good nights and just perfect weather for growing fall vegetables just beautiful and perfect weather but the forecast is for next week starting november to might get uh, below 30 you know, 25 degrees or around there for a couple nights so <laughs> this is where the agribond comes in comes into play this is what it is okay it's just a thin breathable fabric lets light through lets air through water can get through too if you get if you want if you want to put it on a tunnel type situation and this is going to be hopefully our saving grace on these peas because we just got to keep them alive <laughs> just keep them alive and so we're gonna the agribond comes in large sheets and so we'll be able to drape we've we've already had the, maybe one or two nights drape it across we'll pull it across that's that's kind of why i did this you know kind of why i did them the way i did them put the the tomato cages in there for the trellis is right but also it's all gonna be one level and so now I can take this Agrabon, run it across here, go back down this way for the other side, and then it's, it's long enough that it'll go back over top of the spinach really well. So I've, I, I actually used my brain for once, and I did something that's worked really well. And so we're going to use that Agrabon to do that. And I'm actually have two sheets, and so when it gets 24, 25 degrees, I might use both sheets and just double thick it because it does still let light and air through so we might do that just to just to give every everything we've got because if i can keep them alive for four maybe four nights they're saying really cold if i can keep them alive those four nights we, we may be able to get something off of them so they're already in here might as well do everything we can to keep them keep them alive and growing right another thing we did was plant more garlic than ever um we've we've always enjoyed growing garlic and we've planted a little bit more every year probably I believe this year we planted around 96 cloves of garlic or nine yeah 96 cloves that's what it is not heads <laughs> sheesh that'd be a lot 96 cloves of garlic and we put some in in two spots um for you know purposes <laughs> but um we we um we put two grow bags we took 15 gallon grow bags the same size as the peas are in we took 15 gallon grow bags and put quite a few uh, cloves of garlic in there. I'm not sure exactly how many in there. Maybe, maybe, maybe 30 something. Maybe around 28 or 30. I'm not sure. Um, so we put uh, we use German hardy, German extra hardy garlic. Is what we got. And if you look and see, there's the garlic sprout right there. So it sprouted in this grow bag. We've never have we've never grown in grow bags before, but the the here they are. This one sprouted, so there's probably some more somewhere else that you can't see right off. Again, that's German extra hardy. We have to grow. We grow hard neck garlic here. Again, hard neck garlic is the one that you that you grow first. Of all, first of all, for colder climates because it can withstand colder temperatures, and second of all, maybe the most importantly, you get the garlic scapes on the soft neck varieties. You do not get garlic scapes off of the hard neck varieties. You do get garlic scapes, and you have to cut those garlic scapes whether or not you're going to use them or not. And we've maybe got a little bit of reputation for for uh, being a garlic scape channel we do our garlic our garlic scape videos do fairly well for us in the spring when angela makes them or angela when angela uses them for stuff and we do enjoy garlic scapes i gotta be honest with you and angela k does use them in great great ways and so 
we may have more garlic scapes than ever too this year. <laughs> and just for your viewing pleasure, I will show you where the other garlic is planted at. Over here in the corner of our yard, you see here's the side of the house. Here's a uh, privacy fence going to the front of the house. And we've got quite a bit of garlic planted all through here, right? Now these are popping up really well. See, there's one, there's several coming up and down through here. So these are coming up really well. I think maybe the ground stayed moister over here. And there's quite a bit of it popping up. There's a good one right there. That's really the goal with garlic, is just to get it sprouted before it gets crazy cold, before the winter really hits. If you just get it sprouted really well and get, and get the tops growing pretty well. I mean, it doesn't have to, by the way. It can absolutely just stay in your ground and not sprout until spring, and it'll be okay, that's fine. My goal is to get it sprouted. I like to see it sprouted before winter hits. And also what I'm gonna do then is I'll mulch it really heavily with our with a with our bedding from the chicken coop. Mulch them mulch all really heavily. That way it'll add add nutrients to the ground over the winter. It'll break down, give it good soil, and kind of kind of insulate and protect it anyways. While it should be fine, there's really no reason why the uh, hard neck garlic can't survive in our climate. It's just better that way, mulch it really well, and uh, I think it's gonna do really well. And we love to grow ragged jack kale. If, I mean, if you've seen us any before at all, you've probably, you've probably heard us talk about ragged jack kale. Really, truly the only kind of kale I like. Some people are, are absolute kale haters and some are kale lovers. I'm a kale indifferenter. <laughs> I do like this kale, it works really well, but you need to know how to use it. Angela Kay uses it really well, and it, it's just, Ragged Jack Kale is a little more tender than um, other kale and it just has a little better flavor. It's different. If you if you say you just don't like kale, I would I would suggest you try Ragged Jack Kale. It's gonna be, some people call it the same as a Red Russian Kale. Ragged Jack Kale is a form of Red Russian Kale in my opinion, but it's not the same as Red Russian Kale. We've bought in the Red Russian Kale seeds before and they are just simply not like the Ragged Jack Kale. Now, I will say the only place we've gotten this ragged jack kale seeds that are, that's like this would be Baker Creek. So, rareseeds.com. Baker Creek is the only, really the only place we've gotten the ragged jack kale that we really enjoy. And it's a beautiful kale. Honestly, I mean, you see it right here. And you can grow it to get like baby greens off of. Or you can spread it out and get larger leaves. So, this is an absolutely beautiful kale. Ready to use, really, truly. And we put it here in this three-tier green stalk. Now, obviously, you've seen us use green stalks plenty of times before. We are green stalk affiliates. Green stalks are a great way for fall gardening, or a great use, I guess I should say, in fall gardening. They, when you use a green stalk right, you get multiple seasons or multiple plants in, one, in your seasons out of it. And so we will put something in that in the spring, grow it, maybe in summer, grow it, and then have it ready for fall gardening and put more stuff in there so you get a lot of uses out of it when you do it appropriately. And kind of the same with this with this one. Here's the five tier. Green stock, we have it full of lettuce and the lettuce looks beautiful. I mean, it's doing so good. Here at the top, around this way, there, here. Some of the spots didn't come up as well. That just happens sometimes, you see that. But like some of them are doing great as well on the bottom. Just a lot of lettuce to be had. And now, as I said before, we are affiliates of Green Stock because we love their product. It works great for what we do, which is backyard, small space, gardening and growing, growing food in, in multiple seasons as long as we possibly can, right? And it's just, it's a great product. So we do have an affiliate link and a code in the description below. Use the link and the code, promo code ART10, A-R-T-1-0. You'll get $10 off your purchase of a Green Stock vertical garden. And if you go there and sign up, if you don't want to buy one right now, obviously, um, for whatever reason, then you can at least get emails about what they got going on. They'll send you sales and when sales happen, or you can keep tuning into our channel and we'll let you know when the sales happen. There's typically a sale coming up probably sometime in the future, I, I would assume, right? So you want to keep paying attention if you want to buy a green stock for yourself or for a family member or friend. Now, honestly, in this five tier green stock, the best way I've found to use it for us, okay, We'll have greens in it in the spring, so lettuce in the spring. By the time it comes out late spring, when it's getting just getting too hot and too bitter, we can then put bush beans in here. Okay, so we'll put two or three 
personally probably two is better you can get three but two or three bean seeds in each pocket so that's 60 to 90 bean seeds in a stack that's you know 60 days 60 to 70 days later those beans are done but also what happens then is that the summer is almost done <laughs> right so get those out of there get it ready for more greens and that's exactly what we've done here and so now the lettuce has started really well you see that and we have a, um, a green stalk cover so you have a frost cover for it and you buy a frost cover for it it zip up frost cover it actually insulates that so well it's like a greenhouse in there and so now that'll be protected when this cold weather really hits so it'll keep it that lettuce alive and keep it going and then like also even on days where or nights when it's not gonna be too cold but it's not gonna be too hot the next day that it also insulates it like a greenhouse and helps it grow better so we'll have lettuce and kale still protected hopefully spinach and peas still protected and growing lord willing past these this really cold snap coming up you know because we're above normal now we're going to be below normal <laughs> so it's going to happen it's inevitable seasons change that's just how it works god designed it in an amazing way and also he designed our food system in an amazing way that we can grow food in those cooler those cooler temperatures that's very beneficial and very nutritious and honestly shocks the world when you tell them well i harvested a bunch of peas normally i have carrots i will tell you this i will let the cat out of the bag of my frustration with myself <laughs> normally we have carrots i love growing carrots i grow carrots in the same method that i grow those peas that's like in the grow bags okay in that way um i didn't plant carrots this year because i thought there's no way possible that it's going to stay warm enough long enough because i was a little late getting them to I would have been a little late planting them, honestly. So I thought, oh, there's no way possible. Here we are, end of October, looking at it, going, you know what? Probably could have done it, but I didn't, and it's okay. Sometimes you just don't get to where some things just don't get done, and that's one of them didn't get done. But if I can get a lot of peas, I'll be happy. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching. We do appreciate it. My name is Jason. This is Art Creation Homestead. We love y'all. God bless you and goodbye.